It would have been much easier if she would have just picked up pony riding or football or something like this. And our ETA keeps getting shorter and shorter because we're going so quickly! And here is love! This is Portugal, you guys! I'm Elena, and this is Raleigh, and this is our home, La Vagabond. <laughs> We've been sailing around the world for the last five years and have recently found ourselves with a stowaway. Meet Lenny. Subscribe and welcome aboard. Down by the river they build a house Away from the noise away We're on the home stretch right now. Hell yeah! I'm so ready for a walk on solid land and to eat some different food. Portugal is famous for its seafood. We've been out here for weeks now, taking Greta Thunberg and her dad from the United States to Europe. We're still a few hundred nautical miles away, and that's a few days for those of you who aren't sailors. The sea state continues to challenge us. From the sailing, to the cooking, to showering, to even walking around. But we've nearly done it. How you going, Mad Dog? Fast. Very fast. Amazing. Woo. It's so close. We're so close. There have been some very serious discussions on board lately. The socioeconomics of various countries, climate change and social media's impact on truth, but the hot issue lately has been Nikki's Crocs. What do you guys think? A pragmatic and affordable solution to boating footwear or offensive eyesore? Would love to hear your thoughts in the comment section below. The plan is... Sail as fast as we can. Follow the wind as it curves around and end up in Lisbon. And our ETA keeps getting shorter and shorter because we're going too The latest weather was in, and Nick from Predict Wind said to us something along the lines of, the North Atlantic isn't going to let you arrive without throwing one last cold front at you. We were once again expecting 5 plus metre waves and gusts to 50 knots. The wind had quickly built and we needed to reef the main. We'd been really pushing the vagabond these past few days to avoid the worst of the weather system. I would like to say a huge thank you here to Christian Demard and to Nick Olsen for their level, dependable land-based heads and for really going the extra mile and helping us out on this crossing. Christian is a professional weather router and Predict Wind is the routing system we've been using on board for the last four, five, six years. I'll link both of them in the description below. Thanks a lot, guys. So this is where the life raft is living and it just slid and it's tied to this pole. So if it had it slid anymore, it, the whole life raft could have inflated, which is really not good. Everything's falling apart. That wave was so crazy. I was outside filming Nikki and we were mid, mid conversation and we both looked at the navigation and we were surfing at 20.1 knots. This wave, like the, the bow just buried on one side and the wave covered this entire hull, took out the chair uh, and the life raft just slid out from under the table out there where we secured it because Riley moved it from the front because the waves were like throwing it up. So anyway, that was crazy. Typical girls to be like, mid-conversation, not even knowing that we were serving at $20. Ah. Off. <laughs> Surprise my moustache didn't blow off. <laughs> yeah, 530, it's only only a 40, but this sea state's rough. Now you gotta go to sleep. Now I'm gonna try and go to sleep. Good luck. I'm like adrenaline, yeah. Maybe for the last. 
got slippery socks, slip the slippery socks into the slippery foot pockets of the dry suit. Oh, I got in the wrong part. The washing has built up. Stuff just flying everywhere. What's that? You chuck me the trackies that are out in there. Yeah, this is the dirtiest house has ever been. I'm like closing my eyes. So much dirt and like disgusting stuff gathering in the corners and mold. Um, the showers just got brown on the floor from dirt. Everything's leaking, so everything's damp. It's just disgusting. Soup night. We've been having canned soup every second or third night for the past week and a half. Um, all that's left in the fridge now is a cabbage and some carrot. We've got plenty of onions and plenty of pumpkins left, but um, the weather's pretty rough, so we're not going to spend much time in the galley. We've only got tonight and then tomorrow night, and then we're there. So, yeah, these soups have been amazing. Amy's organic soups. Hell yeah, Amy. You know what's up. Fonte? Hello. What's it been like um, traveling out around with Greta? Like, how did it all kind of start? It started a long time ago, and I don't know um, where we're going or where we've been. Mm -hmm. Just taking it one day at a time. I have two daughters. All I care about is that they're happy and that they're well. And uh, she's happy doing this. Then I follow along. If she gets invited to a place and she wants to go. And she says, Dad. Can, can we, we sail there? across to America? Yeah, and I say, well, if you can find a transport to do that, yeah, <laughs> sure, why not? <laughs> it awesome. would have been much easier if she would have just, you know, picked up, you know, pony riding or, or, or yeah. ballet yeah. dancing or, or <laughs> handball or football or something like this. That would have been so much easier. But this is the, the way she picked, you know, this is what she picked for a hobby. Mm -hmm. Just try to save the world. So, uh, <laughs> You know, as a parent, I just have to go along. Yeah, good luck. Thank you so much. Good luck to both of you. Cheers, thank you. <laughs> we have got some fairly inclement conditions out here. I don't even know what to say, we've got no sail up. We've got no chair. I'm so tired. This is what we do every night. I do two hours on, two hours off. When it's really rough like this, I'll keep an eye on things for two hours, wind in the heads I wind it out. Hopefully we don't have to shake out a reef or put one in when it's this windy. Um, and then I wake up Nikki and then she does the same thing. It's been a really tough trip. Really, really looking forward to arriving. Over. That well, we, found a, we found a mop that actually makes the floor not wet. Oh. One of the most annoying things if you ask any sailor is when we're out here and we're trying to film the sea state, it always looks about you know one tenth the size that it does in real life. We were hand steering for a lot of the day, which was fine. You get a good feel for the boat and how it handles and you can put a bit more sail up and surf down the face of the wave and it's all good. And then it starts getting darker and you just can't see waves to be able to dodge them and then you're just trying to hold a course and eventually you just put autopilot on and basically just cross your fingers. Like It did calm down overnight, which I was very, very grateful for, but um, we got the odd wave that just smashed over the side and always the big worry is that one will hit you at the wrong angle 
and um, either cause some damage or potentially even worse. So that's another night nice shift done and I think I've got two more and then we should be in Lisbon, which I'm very much looking forward to. left and um, everyone's feeling really happy on board and inspired and this morning I'm inspired to make some pancakes. We don't have any eggs on board so as an egg replacer I'm using a flax egg. You just mix one tablespoon of flaxseed meal with three tablespoons of water and you let it sit and yeah it replaces an egg so it's gonna be awesome. How are you this morning? You good? Are you being a good boy for mum? You got figs all over you, hey? <laughs> Running out of clean clothes. That thing could drive any man insane. And through its hills, I wouldn't find my way. Search for the stars to hold on to. See if the guidance could see me through Thought I had traveled for far too long But by the time there was no time at all It's the way that I sway Through the breeze that I play It's the movement of light Through the darkness I trace It's the length of the weather we are heading east because south of us so Lisbon is lane don't eat that Lisbon is southeast of us uh, but on that course there's a patch of uh, really big waves like we had yesterday so we're going east so that overnight we can go south through that patch so it's uh, much more comfortable and much more safe uh, and then when we come out the other end of that we're make way for Lisbon again. So we're kind of beating into it at the moment, which is uncomfortable, but it will make our life better on the manana. Mm -hmm. Pancakes for breakfast, Lenny. Aren't we lucky? Hey? Yeah. Oh yeah. I've shaved half my beard. Yeah. And run out of power. Oh no. Show me. <laughs> I look so weird. So oh I'm gonna plug this in, but I'm too tired to wait. So I'm gonna go to sleep. Uh, With half a beard. So can you turn off the inverter later? Yeah. And remind me if I'm walking around with half a beard. All right. the worst night's sleep I've had so far, definitely. We were feeding into it and there's this jolting feeling you get at the back of the boat. Regardless, I got probably one hour sleep if I was lucky. Um, but you know what? It's fine because we're nearly there. We've got one more night to go and tomorrow morning we arrive in Lisbon. We've got 170 nautical miles to go. Today is pretty crazy. It's blowing 40 knots of wind. Consistent 36s, it gets to 40 and then comes back down. But um, the sea state, it's five meter waves. Nikki's outside steering like a mad dog. Lenny's in here with me trying to steal my GoPro. <laughs> wave after wave crashing over the boat. Everything's soaking wet. Oh, and the sun just came out. It was that afternoon that Riley pulled me outside and told me how proud he was of us and what we'd just accomplished. We'd done it. The last of the bad weather was behind us and it was the first time he could relax in 19 days. I could see the stress melt from his face. We were both crying. 
He also told me he's been keeping a lot of information from me and once we got to land, he'd fill me in. This will all be in the next episode. When you're out here in the middle of the ocean and the stress is high, the whole crew stays so positive about, well, everything, because you have to. Any serious arguments or negative talk out there could make you feel like your whole world is ending. Then once you start getting closer to land, all kinds of emotions are unleashed. It's like people can fully be themselves again. I find it so interesting how this happens. Like bird I was. Last lunch. Last lunch we'll have together. Adventure's over. Everyone's gonna go their separate ways pretty soon. Everyone's already distracted. The magic's gone. The magic of crossing is gone. But I'm ready for change. Everyone's ready for change. We just have to go on another crossing pretty soon to get it back. And everybody here seems to sing their songs. I hope one day we can sing.
Environmental activist Greta Thunberg has arrived in Portugal on her way to a climate summit in Spain. She travelled by catamaran as part of a bid to reduce her carbon footprint. More than 150 supporters were there to greet Thunberg as she came ashore. <laughs> Hello everyone. That's all right. So I'd just uh, like to say a few comments about the trip. Um, it's not really recommended to cross the North Atlantic this time of year. Um, and it was a, quite a, uh, an eventful trip. I think we, we managed to dodge 60 knots and 7 metre waves uh, twice. We had a, a huge wave come over the top and rip a chair off the deck. We snapped a few ropes that were very important. Um, yeah, a, a lot of stuff happened. It feels like we sort of crammed about three years worth of experience into three weeks. Um, it was a very difficult trip. I'd like to thank Nikki Henderson. Um, she was absolutely amazing. Made the trip uh, a lot less stressful for me. She's sort of like having probably three crew members on. She was really wonderful. Um, also, Elena, who, who arguably had uh, the most difficult job on board, she was looking after our <coughs> baby boy, Lenny, who's, uh, he turns one in three days' time. It was um, very brave of Greta and Svante to um, embark on such a journey. And um, speaking about those experiences, it was really good to see her and her father be able to get to enjoy um, so much time on the water and I, I think that I think that it's a trip that they'll be uh, talking about amongst each other and with their family and friends for many years to come. So I'm very proud to have been a uh, small part in Greta's journey. Thank you. What just happened? Well, okay. Okay. So we'll pack our bags in a hurry. We're going to a hotel, which we have no idea where it is. Our boat just got moved by Matthew, which we have no idea where it's going. My, my mind is still 100 miles offshore. That night, we all slept for over 12 hours. The best sleep of my life to this day. On a bed that was clean and wasn't moving. Thanks for following our journey, guys. We really couldn't have done it without you. Oh, 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 oh,